Well, my friend, especially at Bristol, you are no stranger to controversy. Sometimes I think you embrace it, like when Cale Yarborough nicknamed him Jaws. Daryl took that and ran with it all the way to three championships and 84 wins, including 12 here and seven in a row, and then hopped into the broadcast booth, and it's been a wonderful ride ever since. But I know this day and this season, uh, these thoughts just didn't come about recently. Can you kind of take us through the process? Sure, sure. Thank you, Mark. Oh, you want, oh, I have a mic. Oh. <laughs> Not that oh. you need one. <laughs> no, I, I like my mic. No, uh, a, a, a lot of people have, uh, not a lot of people, some people have thought that uh, this was a spur of the moment decision, something that uh, I decided to do over the last two or three weeks, and that is so far from the truth. Uh, I, I, look, these are my teammates. We have been together for 19 years, a lot of us have. And Mike Joy, Mike Joy interviewed me when I won the Daytona 500 in 1989. And I was grabbing Mike, and I don't know how he survived. I said, this is Daytona. This is Daytona. And it was. So, uh, But my bosses have been so kind to me. I, 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 it, it's, it's touching to me to think that I work for people uh, that care more about me than they, they do about anything else. Uh, two years ago, I told my boss, I said, I think I want to retire in 2017. 17, I thought it was a perfect time, perfect number, and uh, that would work out well for me. But then 2017 came along, I said, bad decision. Hmm. Might, I might want to rethink that. And then, and then Jeff came along, Jeff Gordon, who's been a great uh, addition to our booth. And, uh, and, and Jeff came along, and, and I, what, if, what if I bail out now and leave Mike Joy with Jeff Gordon and some other guy that's never done TV before? And I, I didn't feel like... That was the right thing to do, so I stayed on a little bit longer. And uh, look, I c anybody that's done what I've done, whether it's a driving career or a TV career, you can always look back and say, maybe I should have done something different. Maybe I should have thought about this, or maybe I should have thought about that. But folks, I, I, this 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 is my home. For 60 years of my 72. I've been behind the wheel of a, I, I, I was holding on to something. I was holding on to a steering wheel for 30 years. And I, I let go of that wheel and I grabbed a hold of a microphone. And I held on to a microphone for another 19 years. So I've always been holding on to something. And you know who, you know who paid the biggest price for me being selfish and my ego and worrying about me? This young lady right here. Uh, Stevie has been by my side for 50 years. We got married in 1969, and we've been going to. We went to. We went to the race on our honeymoon. But it was. It was. I had. A, I had a plan. <laughs> I thought I was going to win. The, it was a race in Salem, Indiana, and I said I'll win that race. It pays a thousand dollars. My part's 250, and we're going to spend the weekend at French Lick, Indiana. <laughs> Iggy Katona had a different idea, and it didn't quite work out that way. But. Uh, through it all, I, I, I can't, look, I'm not going to start in 1972. That's the first time I drove a, a, car, a, a, a car in the cup. I walked into the garage in 1972 at Talladega, Alabama. I didn't know diddly squat. I just knew I was a big damn racetrack, one of the biggest I'd ever seen. I had a Mercury that Jake Elder had helped Dick Hutchison, Hudson Pagan, and Jake Elder had put together for me to drive at Talladega. And I, I really, I said, man, I'm, I think, I, I'm somebody. I've made it to the big time. I never, I never, I, I always love what Bubba Watson said. It stuck with me. Did I ever dream about winning 84 races, three championships? Did I ever dream about winning the Daytona Five? Did I ever dream about meeting Junior Johnson? Did I ever dream about driving for Junior Johnson? Hell no. But those, that, those were things that, that, that have come true, and they've happened. So I always tell people, dream big, because it, 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 it might come true. So dream big, and that's what I did. So I walked in the garage in 1972, and I've been there ever since. Uh, I've been to every track, been to every race, uh, and, but I, I took to this race. People say, why did you pick the day? Why did you pick Bristol? Uh, someone must have twisted your arm. Someone must have said this is when you got to do it. That's not true. If you walk outside the grandstand over here in turn four, there's a grandstand. I think it's 43,000 people. 
I think it's the biggest grandstand, and they haven't reduced it yet, I don't think. So it's, it's one of the biggest grandstands in the sport. Outside that grandstand is a picture of, of me on the wall. I won 12 races here. I, this, this, was, this was my sanctuary. This is, I couldn't wait to get here. A lot of guys, I, I would hear guys complain about this place. I heard, I think it was Kyle Petty said they need to plug it up and fill it up and, with water and call it a fishing hole. And so, but I never felt that way. I, I, I love the high banks. I love the speeds of the short track. So this was home to me. It's in Tennessee. Follow me in Tennessee. Uh, that, was, I, that was how I felt when I came here. So this is a perfect place for me to tell you that not the rest of this year. I'm going to be, look, it's, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to get too upset or too emotional because I got a race to do Sunday. We're going to do 500 laps here on Sunday. And so am I going to worry about uh, what I'm going to do next year. You know when I'll worry about that? When next year gets here. Next February, when all of you are in Daytona, headed down for the Daytona 500, and I'm not with you, that's when it'll hit me. But between now and then, we've got races to do. And we don't, our last race in June at Sonoma. And maybe when I walk out of the booth at Sonoma, and I look at all these wonderful people that have been there the whole time, and I don't, I, and I think about not seeing them anymore, that's that's when it'll hit me and that's when it'll hurt it it's like when I had a race team it wasn't the cars and it wasn't the sponsors it was the people it was the people that made the difference my team I missed the camaraderie I missed team meetings I missed going to dinner with my buddies and having having a beer with my buddies and talking about racing and that's what this that's what this group has been to me this is my team we 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 Barry Landis in my ear screaming at me about something or already jumping in every now and then with some direction or Pam or whomever it may be and the camera guys up there on the roof trying to get the pictures that I'm talking about it nobody at home sees yet so I'm, 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 I've made a lot of, I'm, look I'm not a journalist I didn't go to journalism school I'm not a journalist I'm a, I'm a race car driver I love racing I love the sport I love NASCAR they say you get what you give. Well, I gave a lot, but I got a whole lot more in return. I, I devoted my time, my energy, my effort, my passion to this sport. And this sport has rewarded me time and time and time again, not just with trophies and, and, and the success I've had on the track, but with friends, people that I'll never forget. People that if, I, if I'm in trouble, I got every one of them's number, and I could call any one of those people over there and over here and say, hey, I need help, and they'll say, I'll be there. Hang on, I'll be right there. That's, those, those are friendships you can't replace. And Mike Helton, Mike, I love Mike Helton. I don't know what he, I, I, he's, a, he's a pretty big wheel in NASCAR, but I never looked at him that way. Mike Helton's always been my friend, my buddy, and he's chewed my butt out many a time, and I needed it. You know that old saying, you don't know what to say, but you keep on talking? <laughs> I was pretty guilty of that. <laughs> so a lot of times I got called on the carpet and I needed it, whether it was Bill Jr. or Mike or whomever it was. But I'm, it made me a better person. And when, when I stand up there on Sunday and do this race, I'm, I'm, I am in one of those cars. I don't know which one I'll be in yet. Uh, most people think I'd be in Kyle Busch's car, which I, I love Kyle Busch. I think it's fun to watch. And, 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 and am I biased? You're darn right I am. Everybody in this room is. One way or another, when you write a story, when you tell somebody something, you always have to put your own kind of spin on it, your own personal opinion. And we're all guilty of that. I don't care if you say, no, no, well, I went to journalism school. I sit on my hands and I don't clap. Well, that's bull crap, because <laughs> we all do. That's what I've done, that's, and, and that's, that's, that's what I know. It's, I, I'm a race fan. I love, a good, I, love, I love when the guys put on a show. When they get out on the track and somebody's putting on a show, I'm going to talk about them. I always tell everybody in the garage, this is pretty simple. If you'll do this much, we'll do the rest. But you've got to do this much. We can't, well, we're guilty sometimes of making up stuff, but... We, 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 we really, we embellish. We just kind of embellish. It's not, right, it's not like radio where there's bumper to bumper, side by side, door handle to door handle. I don't know if they are or not because I'm not I'm listening on the radio. But when it's on TV, it is what it is. 
And I love live TV. And these guys will tell you, I don't like to rehearse. I hate rehearsal. I just let it, let it, let it, let it go. I learned that from Ralph Emery doing the Nashville Now show. That was a live TV show. You went on stage, they turned the cameras on. If you made a fool of yourself, guess what? You made a fool of yourself. If you said something you shouldn't, guess what? You had the shoestrings hanging out the corner of your mouth. So I've learned a lot from everybody I've worked for, everybody I've worked with. And there's, just, there's, there's life, life lessons. This sport has taught me so much, and they're all life lessons. But I, I can't, I, we just had our first grandchild, Louisa. She's beautiful. She's 14 months old. I, I wish she was here right now because she's, she's so much fun. And I, I had two daughters that grow up at the track. And Stevie homeschooled those girls at the track. And everything we did, we did at the track. Everything we did revolved around racing. We didn't have much of a, a family life. And both my girls are grown up and married. And now we have grand, uh, our first grandchild. I don't want to, I, I can't let that happen I can't let that happen again. I need some quality time. This is quantity time. I get a lot of quantity time because I get to them to track a lot. But I need some quality time with her, 50 years of marriage, and our daughters are getting older and our grandkids are coming along. I, I'm never going to run from this sport. I'm never going to turn my back on this sport. I love it too much. It meant too much to me. But I do have to let it rest. And. Uh, and, and that's what today is all about. I wanted to do today because I don't want people hounding me about when am I going to retire, if I'm going to retire, if somebody making you retire, what's, what's going on. If you want to know those kind of things, you need to come and ask me. I can tell you straightforward what's going on. But I've had the best bosses in the world. David Hill was one of my best friends. Eric Shanks right there beside him. All these people, Mike and Mike. and uh, it's, 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 it's been a great run. It's been a great run. 30 years in a car and almost 20 years behind a, TV, in, in, in behind a TV camera, it's just, you can't ask for any more. But it's time for me to step aside and let somebody else, let, it's time to make room for somebody else. I, they can't make plans for their future if I don't tell them what mine are. And so that's why I wanted to clear the air today, retiring at the end of this year, not done yet, got a few races to go. At the end of this year, I'll retire. And uh, somebody else will get to get up there behind and, and work with Jeff Gordon and Mike Joy and have as much fun as I had. Um, I could tell you a million, million reasons uh, why I think today is the right time. But the biggest reason is is because I, I think it's time to make room for someone else. Let somebody else do what I've done all these years. So uh, I've loved every minute of it, and I've learned from every, from every person I've ever worked for. Many things I've told you, don't beat yourself. Uh, I, I did that, and I learned the hard way that that's the worst kind of defeat you can have. Uh, hear me now, believe me later, unintended consequences, things that I harp on all the time. Uh, those are things that everybody in this room needs to, 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 to take to heart. Um, you get what you give. And the biggest thing I think I learned, and I learned this from, I, I always told Richard Petty, and Pearson, those guys back in the well, I said, I don't, I don't think they respect me. And Richard Petty, with his long index finger, said, boy, respect begets respect. And I had, to think, I had to think about that, and he was right. I remember thinking when I started in this sport, what the hell, what's the, what's the big deal with the king? What the, what's the king, anyway? Who's the king? And then when it was all over with and I looked back, I know why he's the king now. Uh, he was he was the man and has continued to be his legacy. If I have one, I wish it was as good as as would parallel his. Because Richard Petty has meant a ton to this sport. People talk about him. He's still here, uh, and he he's one of my. I don't like to tell him this because he get all mushy and stuff. But he's one of my heroes, and uh, I've appreciated him very much for what he's meant to the sport. So uh, that's all I got for you. Um, I'm retiring at the end of the year, and uh, and uh, to see what the, I'm not. A, somebody said, "What are you going to do?" I said, "I don't know. I'm not a. I don't have a plan. I'm a day-to-day -day guy. I got up this morning. It was raining. It quit raining. The sun shining. That's that's my kind of day."
We are going to take questions. Uh, there will be a couple of microphones that the PR staff has, and as they're making their way to you, uh, thanks to Billy Malden and to uh, Melanie and Monty from Motor Racing Outreach for being here. Daryl, I know that's a cause that's very dear to you. And as, uh, as Adam and Vince and Jamie uh, and Regan, all of our newer hires, and Jeff will tell you, we have a three-legged stool. Inform, educate, and entertain. Amen. And I'm just so glad you've had a firm grip on that entertain leg yeah, thank you. for all these 19 years. Where, where are the microphones and where are the questions? Mike. Mike Embry, Auto Week. Yeah, Mike. What's, what's harder, leaving this or leaving driving? You know, I, I thought when I retired from driving, uh, I, I didn't know what, I, that, I always thought that was my identity, those cars, uh, those uniforms, being at the racetrack, being on the racetrack, I always thought that was my identity. That was just my platform. This is the hardest thing. I'm older, so it's harder. Uh, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. These people, have, a race team, you people come, people go, but we've a lot of us have been together the whole the whole time I've been here. Familiar faces, familiar voices, coming to you and telling you, I don't think you should have said that, or I, I think you might want to you know think about what you said or say it in a different way. Uh, and those are those are things that I'll never forget. I, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. I I didn't look forward to the day by any means, but because I don't have to, because I've still got the rest of this year to go, it doesn't seem quite as bad as it's, that, it, that it will be later on. So, but for, by far and away, TV is, I was, I was a race car driver, and, but then when I did TV, I, I, you know, I thought on fans and fan clubs and fan mail, I thought that would all go away. It didn't. It just increased. So uh, this has been the greatest experience of my life. Daryl, 19 years in the booth now. Is there a driver that reminds you of you, <laughs> and who is it and why? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of guys come and go, and, you know, in 19 years. Uh, uh, Carl Edwards was fun to watch. I thought he was, he was pretty aggressive at times, and Matt Kenseth and uh, Tony Stewart. Uh, you know, Tony Stewart is a, quite a character, but – I, I honestly believe, and people get on me all the time because they think I'm on his payroll or something, and or because he drives a Toyota. But Kyle Busch is the most exciting driver I've ever ever seen drive a stock car. The things I've seen him do. Uh, we were at uh, California, and he come through the he come through the pack, and he went three wide places where there wasn't room but for two. I saw him do it at Texas this past week. Uh, the man puts on a show, and look. Like I told you, I used to say, are you with the show? No, I am the show. Well, he can say, when he's in the race, he is the show. We keep a camera on him. We keep an eye on him because we know he's going to do something that's going to be exciting and, and fun to watch. So I, I, I think Kyle has grown up a lot. I think he's changed a lot. But his driving has not – he hadn't let up. And he's got a, a lot of wins ahead of him, a lot of wins. But I, I'm, a, I'm a Kyle Busch fan. Deb Williams, RacingToday.com. It's been a good ride it with has. both of you. Um, you talked about you had been thinking about this for quite some time, but as it drew closer, did you think about changing your mind again? Uh -huh. <laughs> and if so, why or why not? Well, that's you sound like my boss. Because <laughs> that's what Shanks would ask me. Uh, at the end of last year at Sonoma, he came and we talked, and he said, what do you think about next year? And I said, I, I, I don't know, boss. Um, it, you know, that's in June, and it's a long time till February. And so I, 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 hope, you, I hope you realize that I, didn't have to, I, didn't have to, I, I don't have to be sitting here today. Nobody told me this is the day you got to do this or this is the year we want you to do this. They have they've been so kind to me, and, and they've left it up to me. You decide. You'll know when the time is right. We don't have to. We don't have to coax you or tell you. You'll know when the time is right. And listen, Deb, you know this. Everybody in this room knows this. The sport's changed. It's changed a ton. And people say, "Well, he's not relevant anymore. He hadn't driven a car." And blah blah blah. blah. Big whoop. I've been in the cars. I know what they feel like. I know what it feels like to win a race here. You want me to? You want to listen to some guy that's never won a race somewhere tell you how to drive a car? 
I don't think so. So I have the knowledge, I have the experience, and I, look, I don't sit at home Monday through Thursday twiddling my thumbs. I talk to crew chiefs, I talk to drivers. I know about the data they have, I know about the technology they have, I know how they do it. I could build a damn car myself if I had to, tell somebody else, some of these guys in there, go build a car and see how it run. I've owned teams, I've promoted races, I've driven cars, I, I've, I've done everything you can do in this business. And, and for the most part, I think I've done it pretty well. So nobody shook me and said, man, you gotta, it's time to give it up. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's just that time, I'm 72 years old. I could do this till I'm 90. I, I, I do everything I do with passion. I do everything I do to have fun. And, and I, I think most of the time people around me have fun. I might, I might have a dud every now and then. I might tell a joke that doesn't go over too good every now and then. This is what I know. This is what I do best. And, um, and I've loved every minute of it, and um, I think I'm pretty damn good at it, to tell you the truth. I want to thank uh, Marcus Smith for being here and invite uh, Jerry Caldwell with Bristol Motor Speedway to the podium. Oh, boy. Daryl, you... Uh, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about it earlier. I think I need to give this to Stevie so she can use it on you. <laughs> yeah, probably so. <laughs> on behalf of Bruton and Marcus and all the team here at Bristol Motor Speedway and all of the fans, yeah. we just want to say thank you yes, sir. for everything that you have meant to us at Bristol. I mean, 12 races, seven in a row, for three and a half years, there was no one else in victory lane. Yep. I'm glad I wasn't promoting races then because you would have gotten some complaints. It was pretty boring. <laughs> I told Jeff Gordon the other day, I said, it must be easy to win nine races here. <laughs> Shots fired. You've got lots of those big trophies. We know that. Yeah. And uh, we thought it was only appropriate to present you with one of the swords that we now present in Victory Lane. Holy smoly. simply says Bristol Motor Speedway legend Daryl Waltrip because that's truly what he is. Thank you for all you've done, bud. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. I'd have sliced you some butter. <laughs> we have one other thing. Thank you, Jim. Um, on, again, on behalf of Bruton and Marcus and another Smith that we know and love, Steve Smith. It would be our honor if you would be willing to climb into flag stand and start the Food City 500 for us on Sunday. Oh man, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do it. Thank you very much. I thought you were going to say, Steve, we're going to say, climb in the car and run the race. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. We're going to have a little time for one on ones. Jeff will be available. Um, Daryl and Stevie uh, for one-on-ones until they toss us out here. Yeah. Thank you all very much for your time and attention. Thank you, everybody.